Hello friends. We are here today in Luke chapter 5. There's something I noticed in the last couple of chapters, and this one included, that I guess I, I have never really thought about too much before. And that is the fact that Jesus, his father, was a carpenter. And that may not seem very significant to us today, but it's interesting to me that back then, if your father was a carpenter, you were probably also a carpenter. You know, you really didn't break the mold of, of what you did. You know, if you were a, a carpenter, you came from a family of carpenters. That's just the way that it was. <laughs> And, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, when, when you say that Jesus is the Son of God, it, it means that he was God in the same way that if someone's the son of a carpenter, you know, they are a carpenter. And, and so, you know, there's more to being the Son of God than that. I'm just saying that that's something that would have understood back then. Um, this doesn't have a big part to do with this chapter. It's just something that, that I've never really thought about before. But Jesus was the son of a carpenter, and yet he's a rabbi. He's, he's a teacher, and he, he's not just a teacher. He's a famous teacher. You know, people are following around just to hear his teachings. And then after a while, he starts doing these miracles. You know, he starts his, his public ministry. But before that... You know, he was being educated in the scriptures and people knew him as a, a great teacher. So it's just something I was thinking about. But he starts one of these teachings and says, you know, as you know, a lot of times it would say, as it's his custom, he would do this. And so something that he learned, people started crowding around him and he pushes off into this boat, picks a random boat, happens to be the boat of a guy named Simon Peter. And he pushes off the boat and they go offshore. And I've actually heard that this is a really smart thing to do because the way that the water is, you know, it makes it so that uh, it amplifies it. You know, he, he can push off and then more people can hear him if he's just slightly offshore. So, so he does that and he's teaching. And then after he's done, he looks over at this guy that he doesn't know very well yet that doesn't know him very well and he says hey why don't we go why don't we go fishing why don't you just cast your nets and he's like look we've been fishing all night we haven't caught anything but let's do it you know let's <laughs> let's do it i'll do what you say so he goes over just kind of just kind of going along with it and then they they catch so many fish that they need to call their business partners over and they just pull the fish up and it's so many that they're breaking the nets and it filled up both boats they'd been fishing all night they didn't catch anything and then they catch so many fish in one cast that it fills up both boats now i don't know how amazing the story is i don't know how many fish is the most they've ever caught in the net. But I do know this, that when they saw how many fish they caught, Peter bows down and I get the sense that he was probably almost crying and just say, look, I am not worthy to be here. It was clear to him from this miracle that, that Jesus must be directly from God. So he... He says this, like, look, I'm not worthy for you to be in my boat. I'm a sinner. Now, that's one thing I want to hang on to is that the, the thing that he says is, I'm a sinner. And I wonder how bad of a sinner he was. <laughs> I guess I wonder that about a lot of people. But, you know, if his first instinct was to go before God and say, hey, I'm a sinner, you know, I wonder what kind of person he was. Like if we were to see Peter today, would our first idea be, this guy's a sinner, you know? I, I'm not gonna associate with this guy, he's a sinner. But that's, that's the first thing he thought of. 
the, if you know what the synoptic gospels is, that's the gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we've already gone through Matthew and Mark. We're in Luke here. John is not one of the synoptic gospels. It's a, it's a gospel, but it's different because it doesn't have the same format as these. So I've gone through the other elements in this chapter in the other gospels, but in this one, I want to focus on Jesus and him choosing his disciples. You know, there's other things that happen in this chapter is, you know, Jesus heals a paralytic and he heals uh, someone of leprosy. So we will we'll skip over that. But Jesus calls Peter and he says, I am a sinner. And, you know, I'm led to believe that he was probably not a very good guy. When we think of Peter, we think of this, this great guy with great faith. But before that, he was probably a pretty rotten guy. So we, we learn from this that Andrew and Peter were partners with James and John and their father Zebedee. And so when he called Andrew and Peter and James and John, what, what I love about this passage, and it says, you know, they had all these fish and Jesus says, why don't you follow me? And, you know, if you read in the other Gospels, it says, and they left their nets and they go. It's interesting. It said that they were mending their nets in the other ones. Probably because, <laughs> probably because they had just caught so many fish with Jesus. I don't know exactly how this went, but, but in this one, it made it sound like they just left all these fish. Like, they just caught, I don't know how much money worth of fish, but they just, they just left everything. They left their boats in the net with their dad and they said, all right, we're going to follow this guy. A smart move because this guy could probably do that anytime he wants. <laughs> you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, how much money you're going to make after that. And if you are concerned about that, then, you know, your, your heart's probably in the wrong place. So it goes on to the next part. You know, it talks about Jesus healing those other people and then it brings up and the fact that Jesus just goes over to Levi, the, the booth of Levi, where he is a tax collector. And he says, follow me. And without a word, he just leaves everything, closes up his booth, follows Jesus. Now, Jesus must have known before he asked these people. Like, he's not going to ask these people, like, hey, follow me. And they're going to be like, oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know about this, Jesus. You know, <laughs> he knows the heart of the people he's calling. And they are people that have basically already trusted him in their hearts. And he knew people. He just knew their hearts. So he just closes up his booth and says, all right, I'm done. I'm following Jesus. And I really think that I need to be more like these people. I need to be the, the type of person who, if God asks me to do something, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to say, look, I trust God and I know that he loves me and I want to be working with him. But what's interesting is that later on, the Pharisees look at him and they say, why do you, why do you eat? Why do you associate with tax collectors and sinners? And it's interesting that it says tax collectors and sinners, because obviously he's with Levi, also known as Matthew, the person who wrote the book of Matthew. He associates with him, a tax collector and sinners. He's probably talking about Peter and Andrew and James and John. So they must have had a reputation for being sinners in the, the community. And Jesus says, you know, I've, I haven't come for people who are well, but for the people who are sick, you know, a doctor doesn't come and fix people who are, who are well. And I think that is another way that I need to be more like them. You know, I, I do, and I've said this many times on this, I do often think of I do often think of myself as a good person. 
So when you think of these Pharisees, and you know, a lot of this chapter has to do with Jesus first disagreeing with the Pharisees. But when you think of a Pharisee, don't think of just some, you know, guy. Don't think of some, some guy who's acting like he's, you know, overly righteous all the time. They were good, good people in the, in the community. People that would look at someone else and say, that's a sinner. I guess all I'm saying is that when you think Pharisee, don't think evil person. Think me. Think you. You know, the Pharisees are people just like me and you. And by that, I mean people that have grown up in the church. People who, who look at other people and say, look at those sinners and don't think of ourselves in the same way. So, you know, in this scenario, I wrongfully am more like the Pharisees than I am like the disciples. And so Jesus says, I have come for the sinners. I have come to make them well. And he has a problem with people like me who think that we're good all the time. And then he says, you know, I haven't come to put old wine. I haven't come to put new wine in an old wineskin. I've come to bring new wine and a new wineskin. And, you know, it's our tendency to be like, look, we like the old wine. The old wine is better. But Jesus is doing something, something absolutely new. So if there's anything we can take away from this passage, I would say, you know, we should, we should trust in God and, and we should have more compassion for, for sinners. And we should be more like Jesus and, and really reach out to, to people that maybe aren't like us. So that is Luke chapter five. Have a great day. Bye.